Well, they built a lot of places, and they were mainly cabins, and some of them still remain on the island, not too many though. And uh, they were ruled rather strictly by King Strang. And he was smart enough to know how far he should go, but he went too far evidently with the boomers. <laughs> Pretty soon, by 1850 actually, he had the, the greater number of people on the island and became the dominant force. And he proceeded to impose his version of Mormon law, which meant tithing. Everybody who lived here, he said, had to contribute 10% of their income to him for the right to live under his protection. When he came down, they emerged from some lumber piles that were waiting to be shipped off the island and uh, shot him and pistol whipped him. They, uh, it's, it's always been suspected, and I agree, that it might have been collusion between the federal forces and these disenchanted followers who shot him. It was quite a coincidence. In a lot of ways, he probably did have a positive influence on the island in that he actually put the island on the map. At one time, with the population census, we were really the um, center for northern Michigan. So even to this day, we have a few of the Strangite followers that come back here looking for answers to their questions. I think that the 1850s is important because, uh, well, Beaver Island became the economic power base for northern Michigan because of the tremendous amount of fish and selling the wood to the passing steamboats. But I think Strang crowned himself king, but that, that, was, the, that was the crown <laughs> for, for Beaver Island that, that made that period that probably stand out in history. History is, is part of this whole thing from, it might not be important now, but 50 years from now it might be a great, a great story.